oil exporting countries. Feeling the heat. Hank Paulson there from the U.S. Treasury speaking live. Uh, we've been interrupting our normal coverage here on Press TV. While he was speaking, the Dow Jones uh, slumped uh, around 3.4%. Uh, the Nasdaq fell 2.76%. NYMEX uh, oil for December delivery uh, down uh, to around $59 a barrel. Russian uh, dollar-denominated stocks on the RTS have been suspended after follow falling uh, 12 percent um, and uh, that market uh, mar that uh, uh, those trends all around the world as Hank Paulson spoke because uh, he said that um, well what uh, the bailout uh, that was voted by Congress won't be used for what it was uh, originally voted for in Congress um, not quite sure uh, what it'll be for, but we're going to be speaking to Danny Schechter in a moment. Uh, he did say more capital for banks will is a possibility, but uh, for the first time, he started talking about credit cards. Uh, those of you watching this channel will know that uh, whilst everyone has been talking about uh, those subprime mortgages or the lending to poor families in the United States, somehow credit cards haven't uh, been spoken about. Well, Hank Paulson was speaking about them today, and obviously those have been securitized as well. He uh, said that they're still exploring the risk of foreclosures to the economy, so no... Uh, uh, no, uh, of course, uh, source of optimism for those uh, worried about losing their houses in the United States, as, uh, as in the bailout helping them. Uh, he did say taxpayers should be protected. He was examining ways for people to get credit outside the banking system. And uh, he was still said securitization of all these things was a great policy and then blamed regulation. And uh, we now know in the past few hours that uh, President Bush's... Um, uh, G20 summit this weekend will not be attempt, uh, attended by President-elect Obama. Uh, a lot of people were thinking uh, Obama would meet world leaders at the summit, which uh, would improve things because normally uh, world leaders clamor to be the first one to meet a new U.S. president. Uh, but um, there you see Hank Paulson uh, still drinking from that mineral water. I think he's drunk about half a liter in the past uh, half hour or so. I think we can go to uh, Danny Schechter, who's on the line live from New York. Danny, uh, what was Congress voting about if the money, uh, if the money wasn't going to go to uh, where uh, the Treasury said it was going to go to? Well, I mean, I think this just reflects the complete confusion, uh, if, you, if not chaos, in the highest circles about what to actually do about this. In other words, panic, you know, has gripped the markets, and you would think that the Treasury Department, the Fed, or people who are kind of the geniuses of the monetary system can figure out what to do about it. But so far, their various proposals and plans and, and acts have not been terribly successful. So they keep coming up with more and new, more bailouts, uh, more measures to try to resolve things. They still haven't solved the core issue of, you know, housing. He, he referenced this today. So they're considering this, they're considering that. Uh, but, you know, basically millions of families are facing foreclosure and the government has taken its very sweet time to try to respond to this. As far as the bailout goes, of course, they changed their direction. They were going to buy up distressed mortgage, mortgage paper uh, from, you know, from banks and other financial institutions. Instead, they just decided to just give banks money directly. And this is kind of a, a little scary, 125 billion dollars to the nine largest banks, including 10 billion for Goldman Sachs, which is Paulson's old firm. And if you look closely at the transaction, this has been a very expensive ride because they paid 125 billion for bank stock that a private investor, according to William Greider, could purchase for war, which is when the last time the world got together to talk about its policies. That, that war gave the statesman who drew up the new institutions a blank page. That's not true today. There's not enough time. The original Bretton Woods Conference benefited from two years of preparation, not two weeks. Third, rather important, the countries that are meeting in Washington this weekend disagree about almost everything. The Europeans adore all forms of international governance, are pushing for new global regulators. The Americans and the Chinese who are very jealous of their national sovereignty. So, Danny, Much it's not... It's... Finally, and this is the key thing, okay. the U.S. has neither the power nor the inclination to impose a new set of arrangements on the rest of the world. So it's unlikely to achieve its goals. So it's not going to work. And uh, 
And none of what uh, Hank Paulson is, he's now answering questions. We were watching live pictures there. Um, I mean, it's good if you're a multimillionaire because uh, one of the things Paulson just said was that uh, he's evaluating programs which would further leverage the impact of uh, investment from uh, your, uh, well, from you actually, from taxpayers such as yourself, um, which would give matching funds for private capital. So uh, if you're a multimillionaire, you want to invest. Um, the, uh, some of that bailout will match the capital of uh, an investor. So uh, it's pretty good if you have a lot of money, and uh, then, of course, you'd escape, I suppose. But absolutely nothing, well, as far <laughs> as I can see, about I mean, uh, 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 foreclosures and so on. It was all, as you said, exploring. Yeah, well, exactly. So, uh, you know, this is likely to get deeper uh, as it goes on here. The markets certainly are not responding with any sense of optimism about all this. The people who have been really following this the most closely and have been the rightest, if you will, about most accurate about what I think the Bush administration Well, the, the statement I either. have from his spokesman, Robert Gibbs, is that uh, Obama um, is going to concentrate on the U.S. economy as if, I don't know, perhaps the Obama camp seemed to think the U.S. economy is separate to the global economy. Um, if uh, he's not there at this G20 meeting, and if they're going to be talking about a huge reevaluation and a redrawing of the system a la Bretton Woods. Shouldn't Obama be there? That this Obama, uh, you know, economic team is unlikely to do anything either. Sure. But, I mean, surely they should be meeting with these leaders and so on, even if, uh, uh, even if the decisions are still being made by uh, uh, Hank Paulson and uh, his Treasury team and, uh, and the Fed. Well, we saw the other day when, when President-elect Obama proposed to President Bush some sort of bailout or some sort of help for the auto industry in America. Bush was still into, you know, political trading. He's saying, okay, I'll, I'll support that if you support, you know, my fair trade agreement for Colombia, you know, which hardly was, you know, the top issue on the agenda. So it just shows you how political all of this still is, how partisan it is, how there is no consensus on what has to be done and how Bush just sort of doesn't seem to get it in terms of acting globally, you know, to, to, make, uh, to make some sort of difference here. And this is, again, an example of competing power interests, competing, you know, strategies, and none of them seem to be prevailing. And uh, Congress, congressmen doing nothing? I mean, it's in recess. Uh, um, no signs of them uh, convening to discuss this? I mean, as I said, the Dow... Well, I think the Congress, I think the Congress will... Uh, meet to discuss all this, obviously, and they're, they're likely to come up with a new stimulus uh, package of some kind to try to create more jobs. We have 10 million unemployed now, and probably not the real number. That probably down lowballs the real number because people who are looking for jobs and have been for a while are not counted in the statistics. So, you know, th this situation here is getting a lot more severe as it is in many parts of the world. Well, uh, it certainly looks like, uh, I mean, uh, you, of course, made that film which was broadcast here on Press TV, uh, In Debt We Trust, and uh, you talked a lot about credit card debt. Is there at least a sign of optimism that finally, um, well, years after, I suppose you were preparing for that film, they're starting to begin to understand that credit card debt was securitized in the same way that uh, loans for, uh, for people's houses uh, for poor families were made? You know, a lot of people have been financing their lives on their credit cards, running up tremendous balances, which are unsustainable. Equity loans are being frozen by many banks. So you have, you know, a situation here of, of an, an incredible distress for many people, and the credit card bubble could be the next to go. Danny Schechter, MediaChannel.org. As ever, thank you very much. Well, we'll be covering uh, all these stories and uh, what happens to this bailout, it seems, that $700 billion along with the $150 billion which were in sweeteners uh, to get it passed through Congress. It seems the money isn't going where it originally was going to go. As I said, the latest, as Hank Paulson, Treasury Secretary of the United States, was speaking, the Dow Jones uh, falling uh, more than 3.3%, the Nasdaq down uh, more than 2 and 3 quarters, NYMEX oil down to... Uh, just over $59 a barrel, and the Russian dollar-denominated stock market suspended. We'll uh, return you to normal programming.